Hi, you're listening to When Isabel Met Aviva, a podcast about rom-coms, female-driven screenwriting, and how to break into the entertainment industry. I'm Isabel. And I'm Aviva. And this is episode 10. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> We've oh done goodness. 10 episodes. That's actually, I'm, I'm proud of us. <laughs> Two, that's a lot. <laughs> and it wasn't that long ago that we said we were going to do this, right? Didn't we start talking about this in like, September or October something like that yeah I'm really I'm proud of us yeah yeah, yeah. and now it's this... become like a core part of my identity being a podcast <laughs> host. I like tell everyone <laughs> yeah I have to say this is definitely the most like consistent thing I think I've ever done in my life I tell people at events now that I'm like out in the world a little more than I was because the pandemic situation I was really locked up for a long time uh yeah and I like we were talking Isabel and I were talking about getting business cards yeah <laughs> and, like, I think we should which I totally want to do because I think often when you tell someone your podcast name they, they don't really like absorb it probably unless they write it down so oh yeah and the reason that. did I tell you why I thought of that because I was at the Hollywood farmers market on Sunday and Olivia Wilde was there and she walked by like my the booth my my um coworker and I were at Mm -hmm. uh she walked by like quite a few times and like we're kind of on like the end of the market so it's like I feel like if I I was like if I had a business card or something I feel like I could have gone up to her and like within just like a few minutes been like hey like I'm a screenwriter I do a woman's like podcast Mm -hmm. like you know here's my business card with info about the podcast but then I was like nah it feels a little weird to like do that when I I'm like here's my random business card that has nothing to do with film yeah. okay, we're gonna we're gonna design them we're like this week we should I would love yeah. that I've always wanted to have business cards yeah right you just like go up to people on the street you want to come on my podcast yeah I just like actually I think I have a business card holder that like came with my desk I hope I still have that Maybe. I don't know. I would love to like display a business card on my desk. <laughs> but um So that's yeah. goal number one for the new year. Yes. Make business cards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Honestly, yes. I feel like it'll just make us feel really legit. So <laughs> do people have I actually this is a general question both for mm-hmm. you and our audience. Do people mm-hmm. have business cards just like for themselves? <laughs> that's a great question. Because they know, kind just... of feel a little antiquated, you know? Right. Like like yeah. retro at this point. Um, like I know like my dad has business cards, I think, but I'd be I'm gonna ask him like how often he actually physically passes one to someone because like right. as for our age group, I don't know. We should we'll have a poll on Spotify that you guys yeah, should. Yeah, I guess <laughs> if you I know, maybe it's just been a while for me that I've like exchanged numbers with somebody like random that I'm just like meeting I guess you do people just like type in their information on their phone but that feels like such a process to, to like yeah, do in the like moment process. Yeah, right yeah um yeah I feel like yeah we would leave a good impression if we had a business card it's like writing thank you notes I feel like in the same vein where well I don't know people still write thank you notes of course right you write thank you notes yeah um not like physical ones in a while now. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like, but I write like a thank you card to like my friends or family. Like if they like, you know, if I'm traveling and they let me stay with them or something or, um, yeah. I don't know if somebody does something really nice for me, then I usually send, I'll either send a postcard or I mm-hmm. write a thing. I guess I do. I guess I do write thank you notes, yeah, but not for do. like, yeah. I guess I haven't written like a thank you card to like a boss or like, you know, people Maybe I work should. with. I know, yeah. yeah <laughs> I think we'd leave a good thing. impression. I feel like some <laughs> kinds of etiquette are kind of fading and it's kind of meaningful and like you leave more of a of a splash if you... Uh, I do remember when I... That. Yeah, when I interned at Sony, um, I mean, this is years ago, right? This is like 2012, 2013. I do yeah. remember the executive I worked for mentioning that like, because I, I think I had sent her a thank you card like after the end of my um internship and I remember she emailed me saying like oh that was like really sweet of you and like not that many people do that anymore but like stuff like that does really like you know make a difference or like it just kind of is a nice little thing that kind of makes you stick out in their mind um but I feel like in college now when I think about it I'm like I feel like that was a thing I was told to do is like write a thank you card if you like 
meet with a producer, meet with an executive or somebody. But now I'm like, do people still do that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> How do you I get the address to know where to send it? Yeah, <laughs> I have a memory years ago as well when I was something to do with the reality show. You know, we talked about this in a previous oh, episode. Yeah. Like both Isabel and I tried to sell reality shows. <laughs> back I remember in the day. <laughs> back in the day, <laughs> which is a funny similarity. And back in the day, I do have like a faint memory of an, an, an entertainment lawyer helping me, I think. And then I like wrote him a thank you note and he was like, wow, you really made like an impression. Like no one writes thank you notes anymore. I don't know. It left a good. So maybe our advice today is write a thank you note. Yeah. Write a thank you note. <laughs> yeah. I think they're nice. I appreciate them. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> that's something too, I think, in reflecting on things I've learned from this year that I want to take into next year. Mm-hmm. Um, this is like just like a random thought I had when I was looking for jobs when I first moved here. And I was thinking about how I went on a interview to be a pastry cook at this restaurant. And I brought a pastry that I had baked like to the interview to give to her because she, like, she's like um, – like a well-known pastry chef right in Los Angeles. That's so cool. But she I couldn't believe it. She told me that in her 20 years of interviewing people, no one had ever done that. She was like no one's ever like brought cool. me a pastry like people always bring a photo or they bring like the recipe books or whatever. But yeah, she was like no one's yeah, ever yeah. actually made me a pastry. And I was like, "Really?" And so she like I ended up not taking that job cuz I took it my yeah. I took the job that I have now, but I remember I Um, When I emailed her and told her, you know, that I wasn't going to take the job, Um, she was so nice. And she was like, oh, my gosh, like, it was so great to meet you. Like, you know, whenever you come in to the restaurant, like, please let me know so, like, I can come out and say hi or whatever. And so it kind of made me think, like, maybe doing a little extra thing like that, or you know, like, you never know, like, how different you could be, like, how it could stand out. And um, I don't know. I was just, like, it made me – it kind of fueled with me, like – to not be afraid to like just be yourself and like do what you want to do like whether it's you know making yourself stand out in an interview writing a thank you card um yeah I think it's okay to do like little things like that if it feels true to you Mm -hmm. and as long as you're not like stalking someone (laughs) (laughs) like don't go just like show up at their house and be like read my screenplay (laughs) I was gonna say also you sound like such a rom-com character work, wanting to work at a pastry and <laughs> restaurant. You, wasn't that in uh, that holiday movie, uh, the Tiffany's one? Wasn't she really into pastry? Or maybe yeah, she bread? has a bake shop. Yeah, she does. Yes, um, yes. Is that, I think it's just bread. She makes so what, bread. What's that called? Something, from, something, something from, from Tiffany's? Something from Tiffany's, yeah. Yeah. Just a pretty, yeah. pretty cute one from last year. I know. I liked that movie. It didn't get great reviews, but I... I thought it was really cute. Yeah. Probably not something I would watch like countless times, but I would probably rewatch it this year, actually, because it's been. Yeah, you know, I, I rewatched it. it. it came out. Yeah. yeah, I think I will, actually. Um, yeah, I thought that one was really cute. I really like even the title. I really like how it's not just like a Christmas pun, which I'm getting mm-hmm. almost tired of. I mean, they yeah. can be cute. But I almost feel like holiday i've been thinking about this because we have been talking me and um, my producer have been talking about potentially like other titles for what we've been writing uh because right uh yeah i just got a new draft in and um i'm thinking titles often that don't reference the holiday actually might be more timeless like i was thinking about like, i think so too. love actually and the holiday which are like two of my favorite i guess the holiday you know obviously the holiday has multiple meanings but yeah. I kind of like that it's not like they're not like punny titles, which can be fun, but mm. um, I don't Is know. Is it I just me it, or yeah. <laughs> when I think of a punny title or like a cheesy Christmas title, I, I mean, mm-hmm. it, I think of a Hallmark movie or like yeah, I think of like, that. yeah, like that seems to be, I guess not totally all Hallmark because I'm also thinking about a lot of the ones on Netflix that I see that are like, um, I don't know that kind of that those titles seem like those like maybe like it's gonna be a christmas movie but i think what we're talking about is more of like um nora efron style movies right where like the holidays like happen in the movie but it's not like the full centerfold because something from tiffany is it's set at christmas time but it's Mm -hmm. not like the whole movie isn't about um christmas it's like I think it's actually more like after Christmas because they exchange mm, the gift okay, at Christmas. And then yeah. And I like that. Of... I, what you're saying, I think is what, what resonates where like 
the holiday is like part of the film, of course, but it's not just like every scene is like talking about a different holiday tradition. And mm. while like people don't really care, at least I, you know, I'd rather have like more of a plot and then have like Christmas be there and be like a cozy part of it. Yeah. Uh, In those movies too, Christmas is often the like the like ticking time bomb, right? Where it's like I've got to get my boyfriend before Christmas so that my family leaves me alone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> totally. Yeah. 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 That's I was not just, what I those just, movies are. Mm-hmm. I was in the, I was just watching like part of Love Actually because I've started rewatching that as my annual tradition this morning and I'm just watching it in chunks. And yeah, it begins with like, I didn't even remember this. Like it starts five weeks before Christmas. So it's like oh, pretty yeah. ahead of Christmas. But yeah, that is the ticking time bomb of like, oh, it's going to end on Christmas, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, one of my faves. Uh, yeah, I, ha- I have to rewatch that every year. So um, should we talk? Should we give like a screenwriting update and then talk about our goals for the podcast and for our own writing? I guess th- this is just like a reflection New Year's Eve yeah. slash holiday wrap up episode. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't okay. say that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, so on this episode, we kind of want to focus on um, like reflecting a little bit on this year, right, and what we're looking forward to in the next year, and maybe give people some ideas or tips for goal setting and um, like things that we've learned, I guess, so that I feel like that's what they get out of this episode. It's not just us <laughs> talking yeah, about yeah, what we'll we want to do. Give, <laughs> give advice as much as we can. Try um, to give advice. <laughs> yeah, and I find just like, even this chat, I'm sure, will like motivate me and inspire me in some way. So hopefully, mm-hmm. it'll it'll do that for whoever's listening. Yeah. Um, so do you want to give us? I don't know what you're allowed to say, but do you want to like tell us where you are writing wise? Yeah, I'm gonna be vague because now it's all starting to feel very real, and I don't want to like make any mistakes. <laughs> totally, um, totally. So I think all I can say is uh, things are in motion. My script, mm-hmm. my script was locked this week. Um, oh my god! Which locked. Is like, You're so official. I know. Well, I know. I was like, I don't know. I feel like when I sent off the last draft, I was just kind of like, I mean, you know how it is, right? It's like you send the draft, you they like, get back to you a few days or a week, and then it's like, okay, here's these changes too, or like here's we want to mm-hmm. talk about this, blah blah. blah. And so now, um, yeah, it's just like. It feels like scary, but exciting. And I don't know. I'm just, I feel really happy with where it's at. So I don't know how this works. I don't know if like some people read it and then they give feedback and then maybe there are still more edits to get made. Like, I don't know fully how that works, but um, it sounds to me like they felt pretty good about where it's at too. So that's where they were like, let's lock this and let's send it out. And so, um, so it's in some hands. So it's in some that? hands. It's yeah. In some hands. I I can't I don't want to say whose hands it's in, no, but I'll just say I that like could, but totally yeah. hands. Hand it's in hands. Uh it feels very surreal. Um I'm just like putting out the good vibes. I'm really hoping everything goes well. And I don't know, we'll see we'll see what happens. But I have I have a good feeling about it. I feel um really positive about it and I feel like I wrote a movie that I would watch if I yeah. if I saw it. Um, so I that's yeah that's and and I will say too that it does feel like um, really full circle for me because it was around this time last year that I sat down to write my Zac Efron script and mm-hmm. even though I haven't met Zac, <laughs> it's, it's um, happening. Yeah, it happen. does. <laughs> it does feel like it did. I, I just feel so proud of it. And I just, when I look back on it, I think about where I was in that mental moment when I like sat down to write that movie about him, where it yeah. was like really just coming from this attention of like, I want to get everybody else out of my head because I was listening to like, you know, all these people who are saying, you should write it like this, like write this kind of movie, yeah. like write this story, blah, blah, blah. And so the intention was writing dating Zac Efron was literally just, I just want to write a movie I would watch that I would think is fun. Yeah it's silly like I, I didn't ever really expect it to like get made but I kind of just wrote it as like let's just have fun and I think that that for me really um when I look back on the year I'm just like I don't think it's a coincidence that then within this whole year mm-hmm. like that script 
got me my first writing opportunity and now I've completed the script from that writing opportunity and it's going out and like it's all goes mm-hmm. back to like just being authentic to yourself and writing what you want to write even if it's a even if it's a movie about <laughs> Zac Efron <laughs> or you know because <laughs> no one else silly. is going to be writing that like it's such it's such an original idea and it's so like off the wall that I think that's why it was. Really and I think the too, when I look, like, yeah, when I look at all the feedback, whenever somebody reads it, both like I submit it to the back blacklist twice, mm-hmm. and then um, I forget what competition I had submitted it to Austin Film Festival, yeah, and um, another competition. I'm totally blanking on the name, but when I read the feedback that I've gotten from all of those people, everyone has said the exact same thing, which is this is a really bold move because it's like such a like kind of ridiculous idea but because it's like executed well it like kept they like they read the whole script and it made them like leave it being like this writer like is like like shooting for the stars and like that's like not everybody Mm -hmm. does that so I was like all right I'm gonna be the one that you know I feel like I I there's no going back now I'm gonna be Mm -hmm. Zach Efron and I are tied together for my screenwriting journey (laughs) I love that that for you you. (laughs) yeah and I I was texting Isabel this so I I have the latest draft I haven't finished it yet I'm gonna do that over Christmas but I read the first like half because it had changed a lot and oh yeah you know I'm still obsessed Mm -hmm. with it and I, I just love seeing we have really similar like fandom loves and things like that. I don't want to reveal too much, but just like a lot of similar references that I would have done as well. And it's really, it's cool to see like where the script has gone and I will definitely finish it. We can discuss that more in a future episode, but um, yeah, we're like, we're similar with our yeah. <laughs> with our love of uh can I say Twilight is it, can Twilight I, can I yeah that you included Twilight okay <laughs> no you can it's funny because I did in a recent interview Zach did for um his new movie he mentioned something about how he like he talks to Robert Pattinson all the time and I was like I that's love- so funny because like I didn't I didn't know that you know I didn't know he was actually friends yeah. with him and so I was like huh I was like, that's funny because in my script, you also talk to Rob Hudson. I love that. Time. I love that. Because it's like, if this is going to be your dream movie that needs to happen and be made one day, like, how cool would it be to include those actors in, in the film too? Like, just bring all all the fandoms. Um, that would be so special to make. Um, I want to make it with you. I want us to like start a production company. I'll also be vague, I guess. But let's see, what can I say? So I just submitted this week. Um, the fourth draft, I think I can say that, the fourth draft of my script uh, for, you know, the one I've been writing for Karen Glass, who's a previous episode that you should watch. We interviewed her. Um, And I work with another producer, like her producing partner, um, Rachel, who's also amazing. Um, So I I submitted my fourth draft. We got, they gave me like two more hours of notes. I think it was last week. Um, and in my head, I was like, this is going to take like 10 minutes to revise. Like, no worries. Yeah. I'll get it in really fast. Um, and it took me longer. Um, but I got it done. Just everything takes longer than I think with writing. I feel like I'm like, I'll just delete a few words. They told me to delete it. But yeah, they did give me not even very big notes, but it just it takes time. Uh, do so you usually have to like, yeah. oh, sorry, I was just gonna ask, what do you do oh, no, after no, no. you get notes from your producer? Do you sit with it for a little bit yeah. do you just start writing right away or like yeah I think I sit with it for like I just have this like master list like a note that I, I uh I used to write it like in a journal and then I was like why aren't I just typing that would be faster like as they tell me on zoom uh so I have like a list and then I lately because at the beginning they used to just give me more like wider notes um but now they're like change this line so like we have the pdf open and I'll like add notes as I go to like cut this so yeah, I think I, I take a few days to like think about it and then I just start, I kind of do often do like the simplest notes first where I'm just like delete, you know, the easy ones. And then yeah. the ones where you have to like write a new scene or something I kind of do toward the end um, generally, but yeah. So I submitted that it's longer now, so, which is not great. Cause it's already, it was already too long, but I think we'll be able to cut it down again. Uh, so the plan is to shop it around in January. So, which is, in like 10 days yeah so, oh my like, gosh it's that's weird. coming up <laughs> yeah so yeah that's pretty much all I can say I guess just January it's getting like kind of nerve-wracking as well which I've been texting Isabel about just because um 
like, you know, this is my first like big opportunity as it is for you. Like what? Cause we're like twins right now again. I know. Yeah. <laughs> with everything. Uh, which is wild. What if both so, of our movies come like get made and come out at the same time? <laughs> like Oppenheimer and Barbie kind yeah. of like a double feature, except ours are more similar. I would love that for us. And we were both like, what if we like both had premieres like in LA? Oh my God, that'd be amazing. <laughs> the same day. We could like, like <laughs> hop. Um, so yeah, so we will see what happens. Like, you know, I have big dreams for this script, but like, regardless, I'm, I'm really, I'm really pleased with how it's evolved and I'm really proud of it. And I always get this feeling sometimes, like almost when I read through a script, um, when I haven't been working on it as much, although I have this week, but it almost feels like I'm like, who wrote that? Like, I like it. Yeah. Like, it almost feels like I didn't write it. Um, it's like this weird, like magical feeling where you're like, oh, like how did, how, where did that come from? Like I did the work, but now it just feels like almost like a separate thing for me. Um, have you yeah, looked so back I, at your I, earlier drafts and like compared to like I how should. it's changed or how I your should. writing has changed? I haven't. No, but I have them all saved on like final draft. Um, and it would be interesting. Maybe I'll scroll back for reflection purposes and see like how I pitched it to them originally. And it was pretty similar, I think, but there were some changes um, as the as we like developed the plot. Um, so yeah, so it's really exciting, and I'm I'm proud of us both uh, for for doing that because I was I've talked about this in another episode, but I was really scared to develop something from scratch for someone else. Um, I was just worried I wouldn't be able to perform. Like I had performance anxiety because it just the stakes felt higher. Yeah, and I didn't. Um, but it thankfully has worked out. And I, I really think just having people guide you is so helpful, especially mm-hmm. if you feel comfortable with them, which I have. Um, and I think you have too. Like I, it's only made it a better script. Like I didn't, thankfully I didn't like freak out and, and the pressure didn't like get to me and make me a worse writer or anything. Like yeah. That. So yeah. <laughs> I really feel like I'm graduating from like my master's or something <laughs> this year yes. like I feel like I got like a really intense you know um really great notes it was, yeah it was like so helpful to work with professionals and just like get that other perspective so of like they like I, there definitely be some times where I'm just like is this like how we want to do it though and like and so like mm-hmm. there there were some conversations where I would kind of be like I but I really love this scene like I don't want to cut it yeah um yeah. But now when I look back on it, I'm just like, man, like, I feel so good at where where it's at. And I really feel like mm-hmm. um, my my writing really grew a lot in this year because of that. So I'm, yeah. I'm super grateful for their That's guidance. Awesome. And know. we form these relationships now with people who have more influence in the entertainment world than us yeah. at this point. So I'm grateful for that, too. Just like no matter what happens, like I want it to sell, but I'm really grateful that, you know, I, th- I think I've proven myself. And I think you've proven yourself to the people who took a chance on us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's like invaluable and hopefully will lead to like more writing uh, together with the people we've met. So yeah, yeah, we'll keep everyone updated. Uh, but yeah, it is crazy. Like the- our timelines are really aligned right now. So. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So fingers crossed. Uh, yeah. Should we so going into next yeah. year, what's on your what's on your radar? Like what are you working on? What yeah. are you hoping to accomplish? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's think. Well, I definitely want to write more. This past year, I was also texting you this. Like it's interesting. Like pretty much this project is the only one I've really been actively working on. Yeah. Um, you know, like maybe a little writing here and there for other things, but um I've written fewer scripts this past year than previous years like I was writing so much during the pandemic but I'm okay with that because this one was actually has more potential to actually be made and things like that versus just writing for myself but anyway I I want to I want to have a more committed writing practice just on my own because I I haven't been doing that as much as I'd like um yeah and just getting more opportunities hopefully yeah like developing a script with you know Karen or or anyone else who wants to work with me yeah um so just more writing and just getting more opportunities and of course just getting a credit would be amazing so do you already have scripts in mind that you want to work on that you've like got ideas for you've started outlining Mm -hmm. or 
Yeah, I have one. I think I've mentioned it in a previous episode too, but I, and I, I think I had a goal, like I even said in a previous, previous episode that I wanted to like get a draft done by 2024 and that yeah that hasn't happened guys um i mean there's still time but i don't know about for a whole draft uh so i do have one rom-com idea that i really really like so i'm hoping to either write that on my own soon i've already started outlining it or ideally i could be like developing it with a professional because now that i've had that experience it's really hard to like want to go back to just writing for myself and not having that like feedback as i go because i I miss it (laughs) Uh, so yeah, I think those are my, and yeah, and then just podcast stuff, which we'll also talk about, but, oh, and also co-writing a script with you, I think would be a really yeah, fun goal. Yeah, yeah, Because we were talking about that when we were developing this podcast, but then this podcast has taken up so much time, so we should, we should talk about that more. So yeah, yeah. what about you? What are your writing goals? Um, so I have two scripts that are like, um, in motion, both are well yeah. one of them is a rom-com one's my time loop comedy movie yeah. um i've been watching some i watched that uh what's it called dreidel round and round oh, round and round yeah. the i think i think all the way through movie? it but i've been okay. watching i've been trying to like watch some different time loop movies mostly yes. like the reason i haven't finished the movies because i've just i've just been trying to watch the first like 20 minutes to see how everyone does the setup because that's kind of yeah. like where i'm at in my script right now is like really nailing like the setup of the time loop right because then it's like the rest of the movie is like like half the movies i'm just being stuck doing the same day right Mm -hmm. um so i've been kind of trying to like look for that in other movies so i feel really excited about it because i think now that i've seen some different time loop movies i'm like i have a i have an interesting concept for this one um but i really really want to finish that one um pretty i'm ideally it's it sounds kind of crazy to me but like both that one and my other rom-com I really want to finish like by the end of January like I just both of them because the main reason is that both of them I've already kind of pitched to my current producers and like Mm -hmm. told them a little bit about them and they were like they seemed interested in both ideas so I'm like I don't want to like lose that momentum you know or and just for myself because I've been I have outlines for both of them I'm about yeah I think I'm 30 35 pages in the time loop one and then i'm like 10 or so pages into the other rom-com so i feel like i feel like it's an attainable goal it's just like like you said like very similar i just want to have a better i want to figure out my writing routine and like really stick to that you know i feel like i i I go through waves where sometimes I get up in the morning and I write for a solid hour or so, but then I can't get myself to do that consistently. And like, I've yeah, gone like a week yeah. where like I have, I've only written, you know, the script I've been producing. I haven't done any other kind of writing. Right. So that's definitely yeah, we my were, main focus. We were talking about, I don't know, maybe we could do this if this appeals to you, but like, like having zooms where we're like required to show up at a certain time and then just write for an hour or something yeah. maybe that could be motivating um but yeah I, I relate to that like I kind of write in spurts a lot or I get you know I, I or I'll, I'll start this new rom-com idea and then I'll, I'll get more notes from like my producers and then I'll just focus on that and then like never go back to what I was doing so. yeah that yeah uh, the, the distraction yeah, thing is hard that's actually why so something I've been working on and I'd be curious to know if other people do this or maybe saying this will help other people think of something yeah. to try um mm-hmm. but I have found that I'm actually most creative in the morning And I actually like when I do have days where I wake up at like 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. and I can't go back to sleep and I just go and write. Mm -hmm. But I get so much done during that time. And I think it's because it's like it's so early in the morning that you're like more conscious of like I can't just like watch of like start watching television or start watching like Mm -hmm. or like listening to music because it's too loud. So I think there's something about the sort of like quiet time between like i don't know like three and like 5 a.m right where like everyone else is asleep yeah, 3 a.m <laughs> yeah yeah Get up i don't know day in 2024 at 3 a.m yeah well <laughs> i impressed. always i always think about a professor i had in college who told me that that's what he would do is like when he was younger he he'd be like i always got up at like 4 or 5 a.m wow. and i just wrote yeah. for two hours in the morning and I always, and you know, I was in college wow. at the time and I was like, you're crazy. Like, how do you get yeah. up that early? <laughs> but now I get it. Now I'm like, oh, you know, like 
Hassan knew what he was talking about. Like, I need to get up at 4 a.m. and just get those, like, two writing hours in where it's, like, quiet and Mm -hmm. um, you're not as distracted because no one else is up. So there's no one to go talk to. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I like the idea. Maybe not 5 a.m. I could see (laughs) 6 a.m. I think I could see 6 a.m. because I wake up at 7 a.m., uh, and I used to not be a morning person at all, but I think if I were really disciplined about going to bed, like mm-hmm. at like nine thirty or something, maybe I could do six a.m. Uh, yeah, so definitely okay. So it sounds like, and I also wanted to say also like, first of all, that's really cool that your producers are interested in your new ideas, and I think that sounds more motivating too. Like I think if any producer of Karen were like, I love your idea, write it now, I would be writing it like religiously right yeah. now. Uh, I think just it's harder to find the motivation when you know it's just a spec script for yourself and you don't know what you're going to do with it. But if I had someone who's like, I want to read it, I'd be like, okay, I'll be just, I think that's that's the motivation piece that, uh, that yeah, can just be difficult. And props to people who just continuously write with no external pressure at all. Um, yeah, seriously. That's difficult. I, I've been there. I've done it, but it, it it's hard to be really consistent with that motivation. Yeah. So. Okay. So any other goals? So writing schedule, like sounds like more of a schedule in the morning mm-hmm. for you. Yeah. Finding um, the writing routine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, ideally I'll sew my script mm-hmm. and, yes, please. <laughs> and it'll get made and there'll be a movie yeah. premiere. Like Maybe I don't know how manager. long it takes all of that to happen, but <laughs> yeah, I would say this is not like I'm okay with either outcome, but it would be cool to get a manager sooner rather than later. But I also don't know if I need one TBD. (laughs) Um, I don't know if I'm ready to focus on that right now. I I think I just keep going back to like, I just want to write more, you know, like I feel like I've got at least like two um, features or three features, I guess that like, I feel like, okay, these are good. Like I like the movie. Like, I think Mm -hmm. it's a good example, but now I'm more turning into like, okay, I have, I want to write a few more scripts that are like movies. I think I could sell. And then, yes. then I, then maybe I would focus on the manager part. Cause I feel like right now I don't really have things that I'm just like, yeah, like take this and go sell it. So I feel like I still need to do the part where I write yes. the, the movies Building that I want portfolio. them to sell. <laughs> yeah. Is that what a manager to... does? Does a manager try think, and sell your script? They help... Yeah. <laughs> they try to get it in the right hands. I think they do like develop ideas with you, which would be helpful. But if I can get that through a producer, I'd kind of prefer that mm-hmm. uh, rather than relying on someone to like help me with every I don't know we'll we should see, interview TBD. a manager I honestly we really don't should. feel like I understand or maybe somebody who has a manager and would or be willing to talk about too. it yeah I feel like I don't agent, fully understand mm-hmm. how it works the differences <laughs> between agent and manager I think agent is a little less like hand-holding and more like selling mm. rather than like developing but yeah we should we should interview both a manager and an agent um what was I going to say? Oh, uh, I just wanted to mention, this just came to mind as we were talking. Um, so like one of my favorite writers, uh, Aline Roche McKenna, she like wrote like Devil Wears Prada and Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Um, and she has a really good, we can put this in the show notes. She has a really great interview on like the Oscars YouTube channel, um, all about her writing process. And I remember her, I've seen this one quite a few times. Um, and she like shows her office. It's really inspiring and like talks about her teens. But um, she was talking about how like it's a good year if she has like one to two good ideas. I think she said mm-hmm. something like that. Like it's a good idea. Like and I that gave me a lot of like comfort. I remember watching that because I was like sometimes it feels like writers on Twitter or something. And there's some people like this have like 20 ideas that they love and that they feel are great, which is yeah. awesome. But it like it it comforted me because it kind of feels like that's the way I am. Where you know maybe I'll have like one to three depending on the year. I don't know, like great, I- great ideas that like, I'm really excited to write. I don't know. It, it brought me comfort because she's, she's amazing. So Yeah, like something, something I've heard that I think is like, gave me comfort too, is that like, it generally takes about a year to develop like a really good script that like then gets made. And so that kind of gave me some like peace of mind of like, okay, if you just write one script in a year, but it's like, ends up being a really good script then mm-hmm. like it, then it will get made and you'll be like okay yeah i only wrote one script during that year but like 
it, it, it actually got made, you know? So I think like, it's fine. Right. If you, like, I agree with that. I think if, um, you know, we're, we're both already kind of like, I want to write like two to three scripts next year. <laughs> but like, if we only do one of those, like, I will be proud of us. <laughs> I think the like quality versus quantity debate like because I think when I look back at this year like I am really proud of how far I've come but like a a little part of me is like oh I don't I don't have other scripts to like submit to contests like not as many new Mm -hmm. things that I wrote uh but yeah like if if still this is like my biggest opportunity and my biggest like foot in the door moment so I am proud of that and writing that script but yeah and years previously like during the pandemic I wrote like I think I wrote like four features one year. Like I was really, I was really, uh, yeah, writing a lot. Um, so I have to be depends, kinder to myself. But... I just realized that I'm like, I in my mind, I've been beating myself up a little bit. Like, oh my gosh, I only wrote this one script in this past year. But then when I think back to like, okay, a year ago is when I wrote the Zach Efron script, and then that led to so much. But then right leading up to that, I had written like three or four television pilots. So yeah. I'm not, it's like, not like I didn't do anything, you know, but I think, mm-hmm. man, we're so like, we're so mean to ourselves sometimes, right? We're like, yourself. you didn't do X many things. And it's just like, I don't know, just making one, one accomplishment is like, <laughs> or not even if you don't it's make really the accomplishment, deal. but you try yeah. and, you, and you like put effort in towards it. I feel like that's, <laughs> that's worth celebrating. Yes. 100%. Yeah, there, I think I also feel this guilt. Um, you know, I don't know if we've talked about this before, probably, but like, just like, you know, the phrase like a writer writes every day. Um, and I felt guilty if I'm not writing every day, because yeah. I'm not always writing every day at all. For transparency, I write more in spurts, generally, or if I'm working on a project actively, I'm really excited about it, then I'll write every day. But then when it's over, there'll often be a long break before I yeah. start again. So I I think I, I really I feel guilty and almost like not a writer sometimes if I'm not writing that much. Uh, but I should be nicer to myself because we still are writers, even if we're not writing constantly. And we have other things going on, too. And we've been working on the podcast and it's almost mm-hmm. easy, <laughs> easy for us to kind of want to just work on the podcast and not write. At least for me, sometimes I'm like, it's, you know, it's more tempting to like, um, <laughs> yeah, well, it even- almost feels easier, you know? Even just in enjoying your life and living, I yeah. feel like is part of the creative process. I was I was actually just talking to my mom about this the other day because I was kind of telling her a little bit about the um the movie I've been writing. And I was like, you know, it's so funny because I feel like my trip, my recent trip to Minnesota was so inspiring to me when I, I didn't even realize it because in my um when I was writing recently I don't know. It's just like some things that like happened on that trip or like we went to um, Prince. So Prince is from uh, Minnesota. He's from Minneapolis area. So we went and like toured his house and like, he's just Mm -hmm. like such an inspiration for like musicians and just like all creatives. Like he's just uh, like his house. You can like feel like all the energy in it. But then I realized with, without even realizing it later that I'm like, Oh, I wrote some stuff that I like, was thinking about while I was like walking through his house and like I actually worked a Prince song into one of my scripts as like the karaoke song and then I was just like oh like you know like it's all these like little things sometimes where like yeah we might beat ourselves up because it's like oh it's been a week and I didn't do any writing and I haven't like been working on my script at all but then when I look back on it I'm like but that whole week inspired me so much and then I got all this other writing done like the next week because of it <laughs> so that's such a good point um and I really like that because I yeah like this year like the second half of this year has been like so transformative for me and I've been like living a lot more than I ever have like as an adult because I've it's a long story but I've been like chronically ill for my whole mm-hmm. adult life um starting in my late teenage years so um so I do, I do think that's important too. Like, you know, having these, uh, you know, adult experiences and, and, and going on adventures and, and just like being social more than I used to be, um, is such an important part of my, of my writing process, probably like, I'm sure it's all going to seep in mm-hmm. eventually. So yeah, we shouldn't feel guilty. And, um, yeah, like I've already had just a few, like random, more than a few, like random moments when I haven't been writing, but like living my life more, uh, Mm -hmm. that I'm sure are going to make it, make their way into a rom-com. Uh, 
yeah I don't know just like a random ex- like I went to a Hanukkah party the other night and at this like big Jewish organization and I they asked me to like light the menorah like this big menorah for, and I, I, I my initial response like in my head was like no because like I don't like being like even though we have a podcast like I don't really like being the center of attention and like I don't like like I don't know I'm not like a wanting to be center stage person yeah um but I did it and like of course it went horrible <laughs> like like <laughs> the like, like um first of all I, I did it wrong like I, I lit the candles in the wrong direction and like no one corrected me for a while and then like the lighter like the candle wouldn't light and just all these and I was like actually all this would be like it's gonna make it into a rom right like, yeah I, I was gonna say that sounds rom- like yeah, a scene like, in a rom com like yeah, like I could even take it farther, like starting a fire or something yeah. like by accident. Like it just, and I was, you know, things like that were like, I mean, this is a small, small example, but of like, I feel like an example of like also just being out of your comfort zone and like embarrassing yourself uh, mm-hmm. is really helpful. <laughs> Probably rom com writing. Uh, I don't know, that just came to mind, but things like that where I'm like, yeah, I, I might maybe wouldn't have thought of that if I were just in my room being really rigid about writing, trying to write a Hanukkah rom-com, for example. So <laughs> I had a funny yeah. rom-com experience this weekend um, yeah. because I went to my, the gym that I go to had a, a holiday mm-hmm. party at a bar. Yeah. And so Thank I went, mm-hmm. but I thought it was really funny because when I got there, I didn't recognize anybody. Cause I, I realized, Wait. Oh my gosh, I only ever see these people in their gym clothes when we're all like sweaty yeah. and like <laughs> and then like everyone right. had like makeup on was like all dressed up and I was just like uh like who's who <laughs> so I thought it was like kind of like I don't know I feel like there's like a, a moment there in a rom-com where some girl has like a crush on like her like gym crush or something and then like yes. they go to the they see each other for the first time like outside of the gym and it's like they're both dressed up and it's like whoa like this is how yes. you dress yes. <laughs> we need to these are ideas that you know what I should be doing more at, if I'm not writing and doing more living I need to add more of these notes to like my phone because I have like a notes app thing and I have not yeah. been doing that lately. Oh my gosh, I, I do that all the time. This is a good reminder. Yeah, of, that's like, on my... That's a intention for 2024 yeah. for me as of now. I highly <laughs> like, recommend not that. Mm-hmm. I, not I mean, writing that's... Something down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was thinking about that because that's how I... Like that, I think I I must have written the idea for the Zach script like years ago because I I yeah. have like the a running list on my phone with like just mm-hmm. little ideas and like that was that's it's like yeah I probably wrote that down like maybe two or three years prior and then you know three yes. years later I'm scrolling through okay I need an idea and it's just like Zach and Ron mm-hmm. trying to use Tinder to find love so yeah like totally write it down because you never know like what it could spur yes. later this, this is a good <laughs> reminder. Uh, I'm going to start doing that. Like, even if I made an intention to do that, like once a day, like, because mm-hmm. I feel like I do, I mean, maybe that's a lot, but I don't know. I, I feel like I have these rom-com. I'm like, oh, that'd be a cute scene. And then I have not been adding it to my phone lately at all, which is yeah. unfortunate. So confession. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, yeah, no, same. Like when I scroll back on my notes app, which I've been keeping for years, like this certain writing ideas note, um, I can see the beginning of like certain log lines that did end up becoming scripts. Um, so for sure. Uh, it's cool to see that. It's like, let's talk about our new year's resolution. No, not resolutions. This is like, what do we want to accomplish on our podcast next year? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cause we, we've been dreaming a lot. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, definitely keeping the momentum, being consistent, um you know ideally having a release day maybe Fridays I mean we can talk maybe yeah, the day yeah. Is flexible, but I think weekly episodes would be awesome if we can keep the momentum um we have a lot of guest uh aspirations yeah <laughs> uh and some we've reached out to and some have said okay reach out to us in six months so like we have some following up to do um even sooner than six months mm-hmm. uh, yeah so more just more rom-com people we really admire and it'd be so cool to chat with them yeah yeah I feel like that's it right like we just want to get some some um more interviews more guests um maybe get oh, I have, I have, sponsored yeah. oh, sorry, keep going. <laughs> yes that was actually literally what I was gonna say we would love to monetize this as well um even though 
I would just keep doing it if we never yeah. made money. I do think it'd be really cool to make money out of something we already just want to do and love. Um, and I think naturally opportunities come from that in writing and in all areas of life when you're just doing something because you just really love it uh, and just genuinely would do it regardless of money. <laughs> yeah, uh, I do hope yeah. that will I mean, I think we're the same on this, right? That About like being intentional about who we do get sponsored by and like what yeah. we promote because I, I've been listening to more podcasts recently and like, I don't know, I really, it kind of really takes me out of it when the ads come on and it's like the person's mm -hmm. voice change and goes into like this one podcast, the girl is like, she's like, I really love traveling. Oh, I love to travel. <laughs> and then she's like, I, and yeah. when I travel, I use Airbnb. And I was like, that was it was just so weird and random I mean, and me is cool. But yeah, yeah, but it yeah. just felt so fake yeah. to me. And like, it made me think like, I, I mean, this has just kind of been like a constant throughout my whole life. Like I can't, yeah. like if I don't actually believe in something, I can't promote it. And I can't be that person who like, is like, Oh, like, do you need food? Like use hello fresh. Like you've get 10% no, no, yeah, off for a year. Yeah. I'm like, I can't No, Like I can't do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So so if we get sponsored by people, it's going to have to be like the farmer's market or like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, screenwriting related, I would <laughs> think. Screenwriting um, related, like. Final draft. Some things sort of we truly there. like believe in because uh, I can't just have like Coca-Cola being like, oh, we'll give you a bunch of money. No, I would like, never. I, I know. Never. I'm like, yeah, I can't. I don't can't do drink Coca-Cola. And like, I think we might be similar in this way too. Like I, I like to use like alternative products. Like I live like a very like non-toxic like yeah yeah lifestyle Same. so i would not if you, if you ever hear us promoting like coke or any like fast food that's or anything us. like please please like throw water at us <laughs> no that's no. a fake account if if we ever hear us doing ads for mcdonald's like you yeah, guys have every right happen. to shame us on the internet no, for being so I'm like, we're really passionate about like organic and like sustainable farming and just sustainability and everything so yeah, we have to, we want to be very intentional. I want to address, um, I saw your, your recent tweet about oh, yes. what you're going to wear on New Year's Eve. Yes. And, uh, I am, I'm also wearing, I just bought my New Year's Eve dress actually. Oh yeah. <laughs> what? Is, yeah. Okay. It's like, I don't even know what I'm doing on New Year's Eve at this point, but I am <laughs> determined to at least like, even if I just go out to like eat with my boyfriend or something, like I want to do something. Yeah. But ideally, like some sort of like, you know, like rom-com style event about your dress. What are you doing? Oh, well, I was just going to say, I think we should do a dress reveal for, on our like Instagram <laughs> for our like yeah. New Year's Eve. Okay, I'll have someone like <laughs> take a rom-com picture. Yeah, you. yeah. Or like, like get like a, <laughs> no, no, what we should do. Oh, I don't know if hmm. I have stairs that work like this. Like recreate the shoes, yes. all that scene where like we both, it's like, we'll, reveal, we'll cut it. So it's both of us walking down the stairs and revealing our dress. I love this idea. I'm going to find it. I mean, we have stairs like in our house or I could go to some kind of public building that has like a cool staircase, like yeah. a library. Yeah, or, like, I know. I, know. I want to find like a really grand staircase. Somewhere. I don't have a cool staircase. So I'm I'm going to be in Florida with my family, actually. Okay. I'm doing yeah. um, New Year's Eve with my parents at their like, I mean, it's not yeah. like a retirement home. It's like a, they live in like a, um, They've like they're they were they're retiring down to Florida, so it mm -hmm. doesn't. It sounds like it's more like retirementy than it actually is, but okay, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm excited because I haven't celebrated New Year's Eve with my family in a yeah. long time. Um, so it's gonna be me and my parents and my older sister and her husband. And so my mm -hmm. my older sister and I, when we were at the Jonas Brothers concert recently, we started talking to this girl who was uh, behind us and she had these really cool mm -hmm. sparkly um, silver boots. And so we mm -hmm. both were like, I think it was a combo of like, we loved her boots. And then also the guitarist in the Jonas Brothers had this like mm -hmm. really cool, like, like sparkly like glittery outfit and it was like a it was like a mm -hmm. vest with like a skirt and she just looked like so cool we were like okay that's our inspiration for new year's eve yes um so we both bought the same boots and mm -hmm. then uh i i don't know <clears throat> i guess i i mentioned this because it, it's reminding me of our talk with mona with like the like character arc and so I've never been like a super girly girl and like I'm not really one to like wear like um sparkly dresses so I've kind of I'm kind of it's like another little thing I'm going into next year is like I kind of want to try some different 
styles and like clothing and kind of figure out mm-hmm. like what my like style really is um and so it's kind of like a big deal for me for like the dress that I bought because it's very girly and sparkly and I, I can't wait um, to see it yeah it's funny I, I like bought it and I'm <laughs> laughing because I told my my mom and my sister I was like okay I bought my New Year's Eve dress but I'm not gonna tell you guys I'm gonna let you guys be surprised <laughs> by how sure. like yeah. out of character it is for me <laughs> because we're we're similar again because in years past I've always been really girly but I never was the type of person to wear like a sparkly dress like I I just didn't really I was more like the best friend character with the dressing than like this the main character I don't know like um but since I've been living more and like you know leaving pandemic life somewhat um anyway I've, I've I've worn like a few sparkly dresses by now which just I never did in my life before. And I, I really, <laughs> I'm into sparkles. Um, yeah, I've gone to like, I think I've gone to two or three events already where I've worn like glittery dresses. Ooh, um, yeah. I know. So this will be like, I think this will be my third glittery look, uh, but gold, which I've always wanted to wear. Yeah, like that sounds so pretty. I don't want to give away too much, but it's really pretty. <laughs> my dress is um, purple. That's the only thing I'll say. It's and it's Purple glittery. sparkly. Yeah. Okay. And then I've got ready sparkly for, like, boots to go with it. <laughs> New Year's Eve, definitely also a rom com holiday for sure. Uh, yeah, you know, the new yeah, year. it's in a ton of movies, such an important holiday in the rom com vernacular. <laughs> yeah, this is just I like, re- like relevant. I just want to say I, f- I found this out recently mm-hmm. because my, so my little sister, um, and her husband are moving to Spain next year, and <gasps> oh. uh, ideally next year I'll be spending um, uh, Christmas and New Year's Eve in Spain. But I think it's really cool that God. there's a tradition in Spain where this woman who's like the television presenter, I think it's like their equivalent yeah. of like the ball drop on New Year's Eve. And so her oh. whole thing is that she wears like this big like trench coat. And then at, when the ball drops, she takes her coat off and she reveals like her dress. <laughs> and it's like this thing that everyone like goes like crazy for because they want to see like what the dress is. And so when she was okay, telling me about that. it, yeah, we I like looked it up and I was like, this is a great thing for a rom com. Like that that almost sounds like a Hallmark movie to me too, right? Like the, the TV presenter girl, and it's like, what's going to be her dress this year? <laughs> and you having a family in Spain is so also a rom com opportunity for you. Just I know, like, you know yeah, it sounds like a rom com premise already. Just you having that local connection um sounds really cool yeah so, yeah i really awesome. hope i, I get today. to go visit them next year so we've talked about this before but yeah just like international rom-coms are my mm-hmm. favorite yeah type of rom-com the wanderlust rom-com is like there are not enough of them made probably because they're higher budget to yeah like go to a different country uh but movies like monte carlo is one of my favorite yeah, international oh my rom-com. Oh, yeah so it. cute it honestly i feel like no one really talks about it in the rom-com world uh, even though it's very like G-rated, I think it's adorable. Highly recommend. And like Chasing Liberty and Under the Tuscan Sun. And just, yeah. like, those are all my favorites. Uh, Letters to Juliet. So good. I think they just have to have a really good concept. You know, mm-hmm. like even as you're saying all of those, I'm just like, yeah, I think maybe it's like you said, like they're those type of rom-coms are probably require such a high budget to actually because you mm-hmm. actually have to film it in the place if that's like the point yeah. of the movie. So I can see though how like, it could be hard to get those made because like it can't just be a like oh like they're just here for no reason like it's gotta yeah. be I mean it's like why Emily in Paris works so well right because it's like so we yeah. want to like do the wanderlust like watching her it live out that Paris dream it couldn't so just good. be like I don't know I feel like Emily in London like doesn't have yeah. as much of a ring to it you know but I love even like I feel like it was just such a starting point for the like the wanderlust Mm -hmm. genre i mean they were ones before that of course but um yeah love emily in paris i feel like the show's gone a little downhill but at the beginning like season one i've seen yeah the first season is really really great yeah it's so good and that's just like my dream show like that's what i think isabel and i would want to write together is some kind of wanderlust rom-com probably so yeah. Okay. Is there anything else to say or should we wrap it up? We should wrap it up. Yeah. It's over. Okay. It's an hour now. <laughs> it's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Your poor dad. Go for like five more hours. <laughs> yeah, my dad's going to be like, I think that wasn't focused. <laughs> your dad's going to skip rambling. this episode. Yeah, our dad's going to does your will your dad appreciate this my one or dad, do you think- my dad i was talking the other day because he was driving back from um michigan 
and he had mm-hmm. like three hours and he was like we were talking for a little bit i was like okay well i don't want to distract you and i was like but you can listen to my yeah. podcast while you're driving and he goes he goes no yeah. no i only listen to that at night <laughs> You can fall asleep, which yeah. is on her website. It's like, oh, great. So you you really do only listen to my podcast to sleep. I'm honored. I'm honored. Um, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, this was a fun shot. And I'm sure we forgot things about where we want the podcast to go. But yeah, just guess, consistency, money would be nice. I would love to. <laughs> And for oh, and we want to blog more. I would more. Like to make money this year. Yeah, well, I mean, that's just every year, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially this year, I would love to just – it'd be so cool, the dream, to just make money off what I already love doing. That would just be – I know everyone wants that, but that would just be what I would love to manifest. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and our website, uh, com. I would love to expand with you and – have more like guest blog posts and just really do some more just blogging. More blogging and, yeah. Yeah. Even talking about fashion and things like that. Like just yeah. everything in the rom-com and writing world would be really fun to do. Uh, so yeah. Okay. I think that's it. Have a good holiday, everyone. And a good New Year's Eve and a good New Year's. Uh, let's make 2024 really good. Yeah. Sounds very futuristic when I said 2024 out loud. I know, right? <laughs> like what? Isn't it like 2010? I don't know what year it is. Uh, but yeah. And let us know what your resolutions are and what you are hoping for. Like, you know, manifest those by tweeting us or like commenting on our Instagram. I think um, I like to see what other people are working towards, you know? Yes. I love that too. It, it's motivational for sure. <laughs> okay see you guys uh next time and see you next uh, year <laughs> see you next year um and thank you for all your support of course for these past uh n- this will be the 10th episode so the other ones as well um we've just loved hearing your feedback and um thank you for everyone who promoted us and just send us even dms i've gotten quite a few really sweet yeah. dms from like Twitter friends and Facebook friends and, you know, friends and family as well. And it all just means so much because I never thought I would actually have a podcast, but I always wanted one just yeah. like you did. And we did yeah. it. It's so. been a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm proud of us. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> this has been an episode of When Isabel Met Aviva. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to stay up to date with our episodes, please subscribe. Bonus points if you leave us a positive review. You can follow us on Instagram at when Isabel met Aviva on TikTok at when Isabel met Aviva and on Twitter slash X at Isabel met Aviva. And we are both active on Instagram and Twitter slash X. If you have any questions or need advice about your screenwriting career, or you just want to obsess over rom-coms with us. So Isabel, what do you want to share your, uh, your links today? <laughs> I was just going to say that's a good resolution <laughs> for myself for next year is that I should like try and like maybe, I don't know, brand myself or um, make all my socials match, but mine will be in the show show notes because they're, um, they're different on every platform. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I am just Aviva Pelton, P-E-L-T-I-N uh, everywhere. So yeah follow me on both for screenwriting updates and yeah, I, I overshare everywhere. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that is it for now. Um, don't forget to watch and write as many rom-coms as you possibly can. And we will see you guys in our next episode. In 2024. Bye, 2024? <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.